At the Centre for Forensic Linguistics, we've been um, running a series of projects over the last five years or so, examining um, online interactions uh, between adults and children which involve sexual abuse. So this specific paper has been on the linguistic moves that an offender um, engages in in interacting with a child. Emily, who's a, a PhD student, this is her PhD project, has found a way of describing the linguistic moves as an offender in these interactions. And from that, we get a more detailed pi picture of who the offender is. And in this uh, particular study, she's examined offen an offender who works through 17 different online personas. So this is one person being 17 different people online. Um, he varies between men and women and he portrays himself uh, self as a variety of ages. So the first key finding was that the majority of the personas that he used were actually quite consistent, but one of them seemed to stick out in terms of the linguistic patterns and moves that he used. Um, so for the majority of the personas, they were taking this very sort of direct, aggressive approach um, to victims and introducing sexual topics very quickly and that kind of thing, um, and using more moves like extortion in the conversations. And this other persona um, looked quite different in that it was he spent much more time building building rapport with that one um, and it looks more concerned with the kind of development of friendships and perhaps romantic relationships and it didn't use those aggressive moves in the way that the other personas did. On closer inspection it looked like this one, this one persona, um, he was giving away little bits of identifying information about the offender, so he was giving um, his vocation and the name of his workplace um, and his sort of home living area. So we started to wonder if this is perhaps the persona that best reflects what we might consider the offender's offline identity. Where someone was creating multiple online identities, their home identity, in a sense who they really are in the real world, looked quite different from all the other identities. And although this is just a case study, that might be a real clue for investigators as to how to start tracking down these anonymous online criminals.